Hello guys, hi, this is Shady Sheryls. I am a little bit of under the weather, so hang in there with me. And then I'm also recording, recording, see, this during Mercury Retrograde, so bear with us. So there's a question that I get asked a lot, and I really wanted to bring my this first video up about it. It's called Astro Cartography. I get this asked a lot. I'm a moon and Gemini. It makes sense. So I think I'm going to have these right goodies that you need for... Um, the information you're looking for so if you're trying to move if you're trying to relocate this is going to be very valuable so first thing you want to go to astro seat you want to go to birth chart online calculator put your information in go to the extended settings make sure you put it on whole signs i use different house systems for different purposes so we're using whole signs now then you're going to calculate it you're going to get your circle chart i want you to click custom graphics now you're going to get even slices of pizza with their degrees and I want you to locate three areas of your, of your chart, write them down. So the first area is the sign and the planets inside of your fourth house. The second area is the actual house that your cancer sign is located in. And then the third, but not least, is your actual moon sign and placement. So the sign of where your moon is located and the placement, right? So first, let's begin with the fourth house. The fourth house and the moon tells me the description is about your comfort areas. What makes you happy? What makes you comfortable? Okay. This describes to me your literal home, the fourth house, what's in your home, how it probably looks, your area around your home, your actual living area. So for instance, I was born in New York. I live in New York. I'm going to show you how that's cool. Also, we're going to find your the location you want to move in also has a natal chart. So we're going to take a look at that a little later. But I live in New York. And for instance, I Venus, right? So Venus is the ruler of my fourth house. I live in an area where actually there's a lot of malls, Libra rules, clothing, right? Uh, like malls. So I live in an area where there are actual malls, actually, and other Venus things like restaurants, like going out to eat. That's one. Then I have Jupiter in there. Jupiter rules uh, learning, education. So I actually live by a school. Literally, I live by dozens of high schools and middle schools and elementary schools. So that's, I find that pretty funny. And I live in an, in an area in the, in the Bronx, right, where it's actually high hills. So it's funny because I have Jupiter in the sun. So I live in a, one of the highest points in the Bronx so i can see the sun better okay so that's pretty interesting and literal so for instance you may have mars you can live in an area where there's a lot of cars or a shopping area where there's more like to shop cars so, um <laughs> talking about cars mercury you can live by an area that you probably is close to your job or your sibling or another area where there's like a little schools or um little working centers okay or like you can live by and let's say you have uranus in the fourth house maybe you live by a train station or a bus depot because uranus is your futuristic large things correct or pluto you can live by a gas station the north node you can live in an area that doesn't get good sun the north node is like a shadowy places um or old even k2 is old used area maybe you live in a non more you know, not a such a pretty area. Um, or Saturn, you can work by government buildings. Neptune, you can live by the water. Okay? So small details like that will give you information about the area that you can live in, right? Or that you find comfort in, okay? Next, you want to look at your cancer placements for and the reason is... So, for instance, let's say you have cancer in the sixth house, which means... Your living situation can affect your health, literally, depending on how, if it's comfortable or not. You ever move, those that travel and move a lot, you ever moved in an area where you got sick a lot? Maybe, for me, that's important because it cancer rules my body. So my body and personality changes depending on where I locate to or where I travel to, Okay. So that's important. Maybe you have it in the eighth house. It affects your your health and it affects your debt. Okay. And it affects your relationship with other people. 
the ninth house, maybe you get in, you get interactions more with the law. The ninth house being judged, maybe you get pulled over more in that area. It's important to know where that cancer energy is located. Then you want to check and maybe you could also add even the planets are in there. Could give you details about what can happen in the area. Like let's say you have Venus, maybe you, like I said, you another ED area, maybe another place where you are, you get to eat. Um, or makes the sun rules cops be around more cops, you know, stuff like that. What are you so that way you're not surprised, okay? And then the location of where your moon is. So, for instance, my moon is in the 12th house. Every area that I've lived in, it's always by water, or there's always public transportation nearby. So, it's important to know. And, and actually, when I moved in an area where I did not have access to public transportation. It actually felt more depressive, but I did leave. I did live by a water and that made me change my energy. It changed my, the way I felt. But in the beginning I was very depressive. 12 hours. It changed my moods a lot. So you see why it's important to know that location. So let me show you what else I learned. So I could tell you how I figured that one out. So for instance, I live in, in, in New York city. This is New York's chart. You can Google it. Some cities do not have a time of birth, so you won't get a rising sign like I do. But I've noticed that you tend to stay longer in areas where they're either the, the, the rule. So, like, for instance, I have Libra. So that's the same sign that my fourth house is in, right? So whenever you see that sign in a cardinal, excuse me, on the first, fourth, seventh, or the 10th place within that other location's chart. So for instance, New York City is where I was born and raised. And I have it, I, they have Libra in their first house of who they may attract or how the city of New York appears to the world. So the city of New York is the fashion industry or the fashion capital of the world, which is interesting because that's what everybody thinks when they come here to look for fashion or the gear, or the wear, to see what everybody's wearing because we have Jupiter, foreign people believe that we have the best attire in New York because that's the cardinal house. This is the first house. So I've noticed that if you find a place that does have a rising sign, with your cardinal fourth house sign on one of their cardinal fourth, uh, the 10th, the first, the seventh or fourth, you will find yourself staying in that location per, for a pretty long time. So just, you know, make sure you understand that that way when you're, you're searching and you do happen to come up across that time, that's great. You get to see that information. So let's say you do find another place that does not have any houses like for like New York, like I'll show you another one. Um, no, I do not have that open. So I'm sorry. I am not prepared. So I guess we could go Google. Let's look, let's Google. Uh, let's Google. What's the name of that? Excuse me. Los Angeles natal chart. Let's check that one out. So I like to use the astro.com. They're pretty accurate. And like, for instance, he, this one doesn't have any houses cause it doesn't have a time of birth, but let's take a look. So I don't have any Libra placement. I don't have any Libra sign, right? As you can see, she's looking here. I don't have any Libra, anything. But I do have a lot of Aries planets, which is also opposing, right? Opposing my fourth house, which is actually would be my 10th house. So that means that in the city of Los Angeles, all these Aries placements would be or would fall right on this 10th house up here on my Lilith. So what does that mean? This would affect my career, my persona, how the world looks at me, how the world views me. So when I moved to um, California for a couple months, I told my family, friends or whatever, and they thought I was going crazy. Lilith, they thought I was a, a crazy woman because I actually had a lot like going on. I had my own. I actually had two jobs at the time. I had a, I didn't start my career or anything. But I had two jobs and I thought I was the bomb tiggity, whatever, Shanice. I don't know if I could curse on YouTube, but 
you get the point that I'm saying. Is because so what what happened to me was when I went there to Los Angeles, and I really wasn't staying in the city of Los Los Angeles. Los Angeles. I was staying in Riverside, but because. Like I said, the world thought I was going to... That's how they perceive it in New York. Or you're going to L.A., right? All these planets here, they thought my whole life ended and I have a new beginning. Um, and I just looked like I was doing everything for the first time. Like, I really was. I was all by myself, literally. I had to get out a job. I had to get a place to stay. Um, I had to find money. I had to get goods. I had to get mobile, my own car, and I actually was borrowing somebody, other people. I had to get help from other people and strangers. I made friends with a lot of strangers because of that, right? That's what the world perceives. So, like, when I moved um, there, I thought about my career. That's when it came dawn on me, which is interesting because Lilith is this woman that goes her own way. She has to go her own way. And this is in my 10th house of career. Um, and how the public world sees me and I go there and I just don't, I can't, I made me realize I can't work for anyone. I don't want to work for anybody else. I just want to work for me and what I wanted to figure out, what can I do? Even though I've been studying astrology for years, but I wasn't taking it serious as a career path, but I was so trying to figure out what to do with my life. That's literally what happened when I went there. When, especially when I was uh, 20, when I moved there, I was 23, 24, which would be the 12th house and the 11th and the first house years. And that's when I started making decision based upon over here, my 10th house. Now it was the West coast. So the West coast things you need to learn that you're learning here. The West coast is known as Sagittarius energy, right? It's the West and the East Coast is more, known more as Gemini, which proves it even more here. Like if you look at New York's chart, New York is heavy on the Pluto and Neptune and Gemini, which is interesting here because I've gotten in trouble with the law here. See, my moon will fall right there in the ninth house. I went to school here, right? I learned a lot of astrology here. I went to, I got arrested here in New York. So most of my life has happened here. And most of it, this is where I literally had to go into higher knowledge. Like I went to college here. Every all of, So it's pretty interesting my entire life journey here. But it was putting a strain. Like I couldn't see my, I had to move from New York City, right, to L.A., and that's when I figured out my path in astrology. Mind you, I have a north node in Sagittarius. So that means that in New York, Saturn sits on my Sagittarius north node. Okay. Uranus is in there. So it's always bringing different um, events to me. And it's usually when I work, when I'm here in New York, I could get government jobs. Like you can see here, Saturn. Saturn rules the government structure systems. I, I've gotten government jobs here. It was easier for me, right? So it's just things that you want to know. Like, this is how you're supposed to read it. When you look at your chart and you compare it to the city, you want to check out those planets and where they fall on your chart, okay? So another thing that I did, so what that I did, um, I changed my eating habits. So the North Node and Leo fall in that second house, and it would change my eating habits when I moved to L.A., so that's a thing that I also noticed. Let's see if I can find maybe Riverside, Los Riverside, California. Ooh, yay! Look at that. Look at wow. This is exactly where I was staying at. Look at this. Look how crazy this is. Wow, look at that. So now what happened here is so while I was staying here. I was staying at one of my lover's family's home. So my moon will fall here, which is why it was uncomfortable for me. I did not feel comfortable in Riverside because of Saturn, Chiron and Pluto. It triggered that depression, but it led me to go into astrology, which is Pluto. That Pluto entered my my 12th house cusp. So I started having to go the spiritual route. I started Jupiter as a Leo. I started to learn 
that I, what I was eating was horrible. I literally watched Food Inc., um, Super Size Me, all those crazy. This is a long time ago. This is probably back in 2016, 2017, around there. Because I kept traveling back and forth. And this was, was what was going on with me was that, that Jupiter landed in my second house of food and money, right? And Jupiter here means that the money was coming from the either my, it opposes my Saturn. I had savings, so I was depleting my sad, my savings, correct? And then, for instance, Mars is in Cancer, and I didn't even have a car, which is interesting. My car got into, I got into a car accident. And I left it in a city of like Pittsburgh so they could fix it, <laughs> which was costing me money. That 28 degrees, trust me. I know my chart. It opposes this area in my chart that has cost me money being there. And then it has a moon in Aquarius, which is, would be in my eighth house. It cost me a whole lot of money to be there. <laughs> and I actually, at the time, I had, um, this is crazy how life works down to the degrees i had i was taking care of kids 17 degrees of leo it's pretty interesting then the north node would fall in my mars and mercury it was hard and difficult for me to find jobs mercury and i have a mercury and scorpio so i would go to jobs and i couldn't get them they were weird and, and it's funny that i have a neptune in taurus because at one of the jobs i was going to be a butcher guys <laughs> before imagine i would have stuck into my butcher ways y'all yeah, you probably wouldn't have been here today. But what ended up happening is none of those jobs would fall through, right? Neptune, it was all an illusion. And I would have to literally be at home just learning. I, I All I had, all I could do was learn Mercury. Literally was self-teaching myself. Bunch of, like Uranus was in, look, Uranus in Virgo. I was picking up, I was learning the skill more and more of astrology. I was just learning astrology around that time. It all happened because I relocated, especially because I'm a Gemini placement. So it really changed my whole entire percep perception of life. And this is when I figured that astrocartography is very important. So let me show you that as well. Let's show you astrocartography. So when you go to AstroSeek, you can Google also, and somewhere in here, you guys, you can go find your astrocartography. You can go in here. You can click ast right there, whatever. For, you can click it search in here it's probably one of these links in here let's see if i can find it real quick i'm not gonna click it because i already did it there we go you see that there's the relocation chart so if you find that area or you find the birth time of that place you can even input it and they'll do it for you so you can see it visually or you can also pull this up this bad boy over here for a reason and purposes only to find where to go traveling to like if you ever want to travel somewhere highly 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 recommend places where your north node and your south node is activated so you can learn these destiny stuff very early on um it's actually your life is going to unravel very quickly but this is how you're supposed to do it so you're gonna go to your chart because you don't want to cause anything damn hard you know you don't want to have any problems with yourself so you're gonna go to your chart sorry i don't know if that makes sense retrograde you want to again you want to put it in whole signs so listen to me very carefully i'm going to repeat a couple times so the north if you go to the area of where your north node is that is located at like let's see this is sagittarius and you don't listen to the whole video you're like okay all i gotta do is find sagittarius boom and okay look for sagittarius boom, 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 boom. look for the or you will or you will go in here and type in your north node Look, they don't even have it. Good. They don't even fuck good. Or they do actually. It's right here. It's called a lunar node. If you type in the lunar node, which I shouldn't even show you, don't go. If you go to these areas in your chart, which is hilarious because I actually was there. Very uncontrollable, intense things can happen to you. So just be very careful traveling through these areas. I've actually gotten pulled over. It's very racist area, so yeah, it was on somewhere in San Antonio, right here. Like when I was tra I was driving across the country. I got this is literally the oh, I didn't look. I traveled from New York to Los Angeles, California, driving, and no city of no area stopped me at all, except when I got right here 
in this area, San Antonio, which is literally where I was actually, it's called Panhandle, Texas, somewhere around there. And that's where I got pulled over, y'all, literally around my North Node. So you do not want to play with this, especially if you're a wild child. What you want to do is you want to find the ruler of your North Node. So the ruler of my North Node is Jupiter. So you want to travel to areas where your Jupiter is highlighted or different Jupiter um, areas like you like for like, for instance, it's um, I'll show you why I went over there. Let's see. Let me show you my Jupiter. For instance, you want to now your Jupiter. I'm sorry. You want to look for the ruler of your north node. That's what I meant to say. Sorry if this video makes no sense by then. But sorry, it's retrograde. But you want to look for the ruler of your north node. So if you're in Aries, you want to look for Mars. If you're Gemini, you want to look for Ge uh, Mercury, Virgo, Mercury. You get it. Google it. I don't know what to tell you. So I'm going to go to Jupiter. I'm going to put my Jupiter up here. I'm going to click OK. You guys can't see, but I did click OK. Whatever. What's going on? Uh, That's popping up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. Conjunction. Yeah, I want to do conjunction. Why does this come up? Conjunction. So, zero degree. That's Jupiter and Aries. Conjunctions are oppositions. So, let's do oppositions. So, this is the, I uh, thought it would be opposite. That's interesting. Sorry, it didn't pop up here. Well, thank you for being hanging in with me. But anyways... So this area is like Hawaii over here, for sure, somewhere around there, which is why I'm going to travel to Hawaii this year, and I'll tell you how that goes. But you want to travel to the areas where your Jupiter changes things. So like, for instance, you want to go to those different areas where Jupiter changes. So I have my natal Jupiter, which I've been living all my life. Now I'm going to go travel to my opposition, which is Jupiter and Aries, to kick start that expansion so you you want to use the ruler of your north so that's because for me i'm heavily controlled and ruled by jupiter it's because my north node is jupiter so whatever jupiter does i start thinking or changing my mind towards it okay so like i went to a place where jupiter was in leo i didn't necessarily i make more money which that leo jupiter will fall right here in my actual second house but i had re i changed my entire eating habits and i didn't need for money for some very weird way i got i didn't need money at all somehow i had money saved up fit enough for it big sip seemed to find work my way now i did have some debt because of that place because i have moon my moon that moon in aquarius so you always got to take in consideration those what's going on and where you move okay so the next stop off i'm going to hawaii i've been yearning all my life i wanted to go to hawaii so let's look up hawaii and then i'll end the video here so you literally want to just look up the cities and type in the the nato chart and it should come up right after see look at that you don't need the, this one has a type of birth. Yay. See why I'm really drawn to go to Hawaii. I've been wanting, it looks, it's just like New York. That's going to make me want to stay there. This is going to make me level up in a different area in my mind. Pluto, Venus, Mercury. I, my, I'm, I'm going to have Venus return. I have that in my chart. All my life, I wanted to go to Hawaii. I did not know why till right now. It's always been in the back of my head. Look, Pluto. Then I have Sun, Uranus, and Mercury. 
which means I'm going to learn. I'm going to spend some money. <laughs> Apparently, look at that. Chiron is at 24 degrees. Yes, I'm going to spend some money, but it, it costs for these for this research. It costs a little bit for this research. Then that Jupiter and Neptune is going to be in my fifth house. It's going to awaken my what I find about true love because that's my fifth house of love and how I, <laughs> Lord knows I need a transformation there. This is going to be a very good, exciting trip. So tune in with me, guys, when I film this, the second half of this journey, when I actually go to Hawaii, okay? Thanks for being here, y'all.